He took my phone and he said to me, give me the cash that you just took out. I don't know if he has a knife, so I'm fearing for my life, I'm thinking... Jib Jib Gang, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Akafi, and in this video, I'm doing a story time on one of my worst experience, traumatizing, never told before story. The time that I got robbed by a homeless slash nitty, someone who, who was on drugs. I think he was, uh, um, I can smell alcohol and drugs. But I'm gonna get into the story. So before we get this video started, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe down below. And if you haven't turned your notification bell on, make sure you click the notification bell so you know every time I upload. So hit the intro. I don't know why I look orange. Why do I look orange? All right, boom. So the story takes place in November 30th, three days before my graduation. If you haven't seen my graduation video, make sure go check it out, my graduation video. I'll leave it in the link below. Um, so yeah, so that was my big day and I was preparing for that big day. Um, yeah, it was very tra uh, traumatizing story. So I've got text message, I've got a video after the day after that I got robbed. Um, yeah, so this, this is something that legit happened. I did become traumatized. I was really scared to go outside. I was really, you know, um, I couldn't leave my house. <sighs> my heart is beating like my heart like thinking about it my heart is beating and like I get like uh, rumbles to my stomach I don't know why but I'm not gonna be dramatic like man now be a be a man do you know what I mean be a big man it was a Saturday so the day before was a Friday so I went to get suit for my graduation which was the big day so I was looking for suit, I got a suit, I found it, I found it in the shop and the guy said to me, you know, the suit is a little bit too big, we can retail it, we can readjust it, and I said, okay, cool, perfect, and he told me to come back the next day, which was a Saturday, so I went back on a Saturday, like he said to me, like, come back 6, 6 p.m. in the afternoon, and I said to him, okay, cool, fine, so I went to, I went back to the shop at 6 p.m., um, I got my suit, I've got my, you know, my bow tie, I've got everything, so he was like, okay, cool, here's everything, I tried it on, I liked it, I got the bag, I left the shop, and, you know, I texted my friend, and I said to her, do you want to meet up, let's, like, let's meet up, and she was like, yeah, I'm down, where, where do you want to meet up, and I said, do you want to go Oxford Street, because I need to buy um, shoes for my suit, and she was like, cool, I can help you, um, I'm going to help you out, and I said, okay, thank you, so she was like, where are you, and I said, I'm on my way, I've got the text message here, I was like on my way to go Oxford Street so I got to Oxford Street we went into Topshop and I got a shoes that I liked I purchased the shoes and then I left so now it's like 8 o'clock 8 around 8 you know 8.39 so we were just chilling we went to um, Chipotle and we got some food and this is the craziest thing that happens in life like I had a gut feeling something really bad was gonna happen like I really do you know when you can feel it? Like, I don't know why I was feeling that, like, the whole day. I was feeling really anxious. I don't know if it was going to get my suit, or I don't know if it, it was. I don't know. So, um, we got our food from Chipotle. We ate it. We were just chilling. We catched up. You know, she was nervous. She was scared. She was excited for graduation. I was feeling the same. We were just, you know, chatting, and then, you know, just preparing for the big day. Um, just like three days after um, Yeah, so we left Chipotle and now we are on our way to go home It was around like 9 9 30 and I, this is what I said to my friend This is how crazy it is. Yeah, I said to my friend um, I had my brother's card which you know um, He couldn't he didn't have an uh, online banking so he couldn't transfer the money to my account, but I had his card so boom Oh, this is so scary. This literally the worst experience ever in my life. Let me get to it Okay, so I said to my friend, um, I feel like I'm gonna get robbed I said to, I, I swear to God. I'm not lying like I'm not I swear to God I'm not lying. I said to her. I feel like I'm gonna get robbed and she said to me don't say that like don't be silly I'm with you nothing is gonna happen to you right and I said to her yeah, yeah, yeah And then I just basically laughed it off But I had a gut feeling that something was gonna happen and then I saw a supporter and then um, you know It kind of made me feel better, you know, we took some pictures and it was like okay yeah, yeah. And then we got on the train and yeah, so she went her way I went my way and now I got to a station near my house it's you know the ghetto the nitty literally a lot of things happen in this area and 
Like I'm not gonna give out my area, but it, it's, it's the ones that where it's like a lot of things happen. So I got off the train near my house, the station where I normally get off every time. So I got off the uh, I've got off the train at the station, and then um, there was a cash machine in the station. So I was like, okay, now I feel so safe because I'm in, inside the station. Nothing's gonna happen. No one could do anything to me. There's cameras. Do you know what I mean? So. And then as I walked out the station and as I tapped out, um, I literally saw three guys. Um, I don't care. I'm going to say the colours. I'm going to say the colours. Like, I'm not going to create a stereotype or racism, but I have to say, like, it's my story. Do you know what I mean? Who I saw. Like, I'm not creating fear or anything, but I saw three um, black guys around there. Like, I think they were, like, 30s and 40s, in their 30s, 40s. And they were just literally standing like outside the barriers. So there was a literally like a, there was a metal barrier that people just like lean on and chat to. So they were standing there as I beeped out from the station. Um, I, I saw it in my eye, but I didn't think anything of it because they were pretending to chat. And this is how I noticed after the thing happened. So they were just pretending to chat. So I, and I said to myself, oh, there's a cash machine here. Let me just go and get cash out. Um, yeah. So I tapped out. I, you know, went to the cash machine. I, I put my pin in and I got the cash out and, you know, I put it in my pocket. And one of the guys was literally watching me. So I left. The station I walked out and now there is a crossing road so I was crossing the road halfway the road and this and these okay I was crossing the road but around this time it was 10 o'clock 10 p.m. at night very dark it's barely anyone walking on the street there's like barely cars so I crossed the road and this guy was walking behind me and my sister I think my sister was calling me and then I kind of like didn't pick up because I was, like my phone was in my pocket. I didn't pick up, so I got my phone out and I was about to call my sister. So I got my phone out to call back my sister and I was putting it like 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 this and I'm walking forward. And when you're walking forward, you don't know who's coming behind you. You don't like it's very unexpected. Um, it's out of the blue. So I was walking and the guy literally grabbed my phone. It was unlocked. He grabbed it off my hand and he took my phone and he said to me give me the cash that you just took out and i said to him what like what are you doing like i'm like i'm shocked at this point that someone just snatched my phone off my hand i'm thinking who are you what are you doing like what are you doing so he took it off my hand and i'm thinking what's going on and he goes to me give me the cash that you just took out give me the 30 pound you took out and I said to him, I'm very honest person, like, I'm very honest, I'll tell him, I told him, like, I didn't get £30 out, I got £20 out. Listen, I feel so embarrassing and humiliated telling you guys this, but last night I was involved in the most craziest, craziest um, experience ever in my life. It was my first time getting robbed, but um, Alhamdulillah, I survived, like, nothing happened, I wasn't harmed, I was in a condition that I could have moved, so praise to Allah. And, guys, if you know that station, um, that, you know, he followed me, um you know as, as soon as i crossed the road he followed me he was like give me the money that you took out and he snatched my phone so it was either my phone or the money and either i get harmed but i was like you know what take the 20 pound and you know what i mean alhamdulillah like, you know what i mean allah is gonna bless you with more but that's not the issue but alhamdulillah but guys please please well i have be careful because as soon as you get money out look around like look around I don't know why I had to tell him how much I got, but I knew he was watching me. Like, before I was getting the money out, I knew there were people watching me. So, I said to him, I, get, I didn't get £30 out, I got £20 out. And he said to me, give me the £20, I need it, I need it. And I said to him, I can't give you, this is for my mom. like, I need to buy food. Like, obviously in my mind, like, I was like, be, like, be, um, what's that word? Sympathetic, sympathetic, yeah, sympathetic. And I said to myself, no, I need the money, like, it's for my mom. I can't give you, my mom needs this, this is for my mom. He was like, give me your money the money that you took out 30 pound and i said to him i didn't get 30 pound out i got 20 pound out like i gave him attitude like because obviously i'm standing for myself like anything can happen so i said to him give me my phone like give me my phone back and he goes to me i'll give your phone back if you give me the money so i'm thinking i could have snatched the phone off off his hand or do something but me knowing myself things will properly escalate i don't know if he has a knife because in the uk we've got a massive knife crime that happens in the uk everyone knows this so i'm fearing for my life i'm thinking oh my god my youtube career is over before it even started oh my god my career is over i'm going to get stabbed i'm going to get killed this is it this like my life 
my I no my, no my eyes my life flashed before my eyes wallahi i'm not even joking i swear to i'm not joking so he um i literally took the money out um i gave i handed it over the money luckily he didn't you know snatch it and run away with the phone uh, because my instagram was open my twitter was open my youtube was open like literally everything was open on the app like my phone was open he could have gone on instagram he could have gone on everywhere this is more important 20 pound i can get back and me being a muslim i knew like do you know what I mean? This money was for him. I was supposed to get this money out to give it to him. Like, there's no other way of telling the story. So, he gave me the phone back. I gave him the money. And I literally froze. Wallahi, like, I'm not lying to you. This is the most worst experience that any anyone can ever experience. Like, I was alone. I'm thinking, like, this, like, it, like, these things never, like, it's not going to happen. So, I froze. I felt like... I was out of my body. Like, I'm not gonna describe it as sexual assault or rape, but it felt like those, when people told those stories, it felt a little bit like that. It felt like somebody has pointed a gun, um, uh, what, what is it called, at knife point, gun point. I was literally shocked. I was like, and I can literally, I turn around and I see the guy walking away with my 20 pound and looking like this. As he was disappearing into distance, my guy is going into a gambling shop. He's taking my 20 pound into a gambling shop. Like, he was looking into the window of the gambling shop and like he was looking as if he wanted to go. And I'm thinking, he's like, obviously he was, uh, he was, I think he was homeless. And I think he was a druggie. He was, I don't know if that's offensive. Um, he was a nitty. So... I'm thinking, you're taking this 20 pound to put, to put it in use. What? Are you crazy? And I'm watching my guy take my 20 pound, walk into distance, like, like he's, I'm walking on sunshine. Whoa, I'm walking on a sunshine. Like he's literally going into distance. <laughs> I don't think there's anything I could have done. So I walked away and you know, um, I got to my bus station. And I got on the bus and I'm just replaying the whole situation, how it went down, what I could have done, what, you know, um, how I could have prevented it. I'm just replaying the story again and again and again in my head. And I got off the bus, I got home and I texted my friend. I said to her, I got robbed. Well, I spelled it wrong, but this is what I said because I was literally, I was shaking. And her name is Caitlin, so Caitlin, if you're watching this, literally, I said, did I not tell you that I was going to get robbed? Did I not say it? And I remember telling, like, my brother, I called my sister and I told my sister, like, yo, like, I just got robbed. Like, this is crazy. Like, what's going on? And then uh, I told my mom, my mom was like, we're going to look for the guy. And I said to her mom, like, if you go look for the guy and if you snitch, shit, like, things are going to escalate. Like, you got to leave it alone. But yeah, I don't think I could have not prevent prevented it. And then the next day, I was very traumatized. When I told you, I was very traumatized. Like, it was the most craziest experience that I could ever go through ever in my life. Like, but when things happen unexpected, um, out of the blue, it's like, <gasps> it just shocks you to the core. And you're just like, yeah. Those like I don't I, I don't know if like to those who do to those who actually happen to this like once if like once you get raped is oh I mean once you get robbed sorry but me being Muslim again I told myself that it was meant to happen I was meant to experience this I was meant to go through this it's a blessing like nothing happened to me like um, I didn't get stabbed I didn't get harmed he just you know took a 20 pound which is literally nothing compared to what God is gonna give me or what God is gonna you know bless me with my life when something is taken away from you God is gonna give you something greater I said to myself you know this is not gonna ruin my graduation this is not gonna stop me from graduating like this memory has to you know put it at the back put it in the in the memory stock put it in a memory stock I don't want to hear it I don't want to hear it and I, I told myself like put it put it at the back put it at the back I want it at the back put it at the back store it put it in the storage never tell it and you know my graduate my graduation came I was preparing for 
the the video i was preparing for the uh you know the shoe i was preparing for the day i was preparing for a lot of things like a lot of things were gonna take place Do you know i didn't want it to ruin my big day i um, no it's not gonna ruin not my big day are you dumb are you dumb it's not gonna ruin my day absolutely not it's not going to ruin my day. i told myself this is not going to ruin my day. I'm going to look forward. I'm going to move on. The future is bright. The future look amazing. I'm going to take a leap into the future. My big day is coming. I'm going. <laughs> I literally told myself, I said, what can I do in this situation? I'm not going to cry about it. No. I'm going to laugh about it. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to... Yes, I'm coming. I'm coming. Do you know what I mean? So, like, in these situations, I tell people, like, yeah, like, you, you need a day or two, you know, to, like, suck it in. Like, do you know what I mean? Look yourself in the mirror. Like, what happened is really not your fault. There is nothing you can do. Like, do you know what I mean? I, like, I blame myself because the money was not for me. It was not my money. It was my brother's money. I was getting that money out so I can give it to him. Do you see what I mean? It's not my money, but I can't do nothing. The money's gone. What are you going to do? 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 Nothing. So I told myself, like, I can't blame myself. Like, it's not my fault. Like, it's literally out of my control. All I can do is move forward and be positive. That's all I tell people. To those people that get um, stopped at gunpoint, um, you know, to those who get sexual assaulted, raped, it's not your fault. I... I beg you, it's not your fault. If something like this does happen, it's not your fault, I'm telling you. Do, do I need a microphone? Do I need a microphone? It's not your fault! It's not your fault! No one to blame but you. Don't blame yourself. It's something that was meant to happen. It was meant to happen to you. You was meant to experience it. You was meant to learn from it. You was meant to grow from it. You was meant to move on from it. The world is not ending. No, or maybe it could. We're in 2020. Anything can happen. God forbid, please, please. Do you know? Oh my God. Oh my God. Like, are you serious? Are you serious? Is this, is this happening? Is this serious? Are you serious? But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the story. If you did like it, please give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe down below. And if you haven't turned your notification bell on, make sure you click the notification bell on so you know every time I upload. And please do share the story with anyone that may, you know, need to hear this. Um, so please do share it. It would mean a lot to me. So yeah, so see you next time. Oh my God, it's so traumatizing. It's so embarrassing. But yeah, um...